Okay, so Ellie and I have just been given notice to vacate in our current apartment, which is like less than ideal for many reasons. It the sucks. It sucks, but I got cake, so. Uh, so that, it's not great. So I want to make sure before I leave here that I have the aerial fabric colored and ready to go. So I'm dyeing the fabric for the majority of Ariel's skirt and her bodice today. I'm about to commit to dyeing it and I'm kind of freaking out because I'm not 100% sure if I'm ready to commit to it. This is my original color that I did of her petticoat and that will be her sleeves and the piping. And I'm super, super happy with this. This came out the perfect color. Um, so now I just need to match that level of perfection. So I proceeded to do a test the other night. It's not the recipe that I need, but I was playing with the level of color saturation because this is still a very light color. And the color that I want, take a pause, John. You don't need to talk through your burps. <laughs> <laughs> so I was doing a test the other night and these are the two that I came up with. This was my original test. Now it was not this level of colour immediately. I ended up, it was basically the same colour of this and I was really frustrated and couldn't figure out why I wasn't getting the level of colour that I desired. Um, so I went on the RIT website and basically when you add heat it helps with the level of colour saturation. So that's how I was able to get this colour. Then I tried to add water to try and figure out the water to dye ratio that I needed and I'm definitely going to need something that's close to this ratio. So I have currently a bath sitting over there, right there, you can see it, of this colour here. What I'm trying to figure out is, it's definitely kind of in the same vein of the colour that I need, but I'm not going to find out what the colour actually is until the heat saturates through it. Um, now I've currently got it on the stove heating up. Like at what, at what time do I just commit? Now. I'm going to do one more test. <laughs> I really want to go to bed, but I also want to dye the fabric. This is the dilemma of the full-time worker who also is a sewer. In terms of my design, I think it's fairly simple. I plan to do a circle skirt just a long length circle skirt out of this one. I don't think I'm gonna do the double circle skirt like I did on the petticoat. I think I'm just gonna do the single one for the outside layer. In terms of the dyeing process, I have now completed that. So I used Ritz dye again, and so I used their recipe for the mint jelly color as my base recipe. But I also didn't really follow this that much. I did a lot of tests trying to get the color that I wanted. Some were kind of lighter, some I added different colors to, to get different strengths and types of colors. This was the one I liked the best. It wasn't quite 100% the color that I wanted. It reads a little more blue than I had desired, but that was my goal that I was trying to work towards. Still like a really pretty color, but it's a lot lighter than the color that I had anticipated for the base. It's very, very similar to what I already have. Now at first I was really disappointed in this because you can see the difference in color is quite significant and I think if I'd have left it in longer, um, to get this kind of color I had to apply a lot of heat. The <laughs> There's a lot of kind of tie dye areas where the colors have caught more in certain areas. But to be honest, I don't really mind this. One, it's the underskirt. Two, I feel like it kind of works with the oceanic vibe of Ariel's character. And three, I just, I think it looks pretty dang cool. <laughs> I ended up purchasing this chiffon fabric as well to go over the top of that fabric anyway. When the chiffon is actually over this lighter fabric, the one that I hadn't intended on making, I think the color reads a lot more vibrant, which is a lot more Disney. I'm actually really okay with that. I can't decide if I'm gonna circle skirt this as well so that it's the same shape, or if I'm just gonna do a rectangle and gather it down. 
Now, the last time I used that technique, like I really didn't like the look of it, but this is a much fuller skirt with a hoop underneath that's gonna help to poof it out. I think, I think I'll create the base skirt first and then do this on top. I found that in researching for this dress, either the glitter fabrics that I could source were right amount of glittery that I wanted, but it was a consistent glitter all throughout the fabric. It wasn't a gradient. It was not the right texture that I wanted, so it wouldn't have the right flow, or it was just the wrong color. And so I decided to create the skirt and then do the rhinestones myself. It's gonna take a lot of time when I do it, but you know, it's just gonna be like two weeks of my life. I'll just be doing rhinestones after work every day. The skirt itself is fairly simple, so I'm gonna get started cutting the circle skirt, piecing it together. All right, cutting out the circle skirt. This is an easy task. I've done it a billion times before, so I think I'm just gonna cut it out, sew it, and meet you back here. I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> I'm so impressed with how the glitter comes through so clearly on camera. So we've got over here where there's no glitter, which is still gorgeous. But with the glitter underneath, come on. has been constructed and she looks really pretty. Still got to do the waistband but I'm going to start working on the hem of the undermost layer, the deluxe satin. Um, Ellie was actually the one who kind of convinced me to do this. I have purchased, I don't even know what it's called, horse hair, cross green uh, and it's meant to help uh, put the base of the dress to kind of help it give it structure and movement. Uh, it's the first time I've ever done it so I'm going to try uh, hemming with this and I'm kind of excited to see what it looks like. So this overskirt is the last thing I need to hem before I pack this project away. Now the really annoying thing is right here you can see I have um, cut the skirt way too short for the actual hem. So my dilemma is do I go around the whole skirt and cut it to that length to keep it even or do I just kind of even it out a little bit across the majority of the skirt. I've decided I'm just going to overlock it and um, stitch that overlocked hem under so I don't lose too much length. is basically done. She's ham, she's all connected at the top. She just needs a waistband to tie up, especially because there are a few areas of overlapping that I have just pinned. And the overskirt, as well as the additional rhinestoning that I'm gonna do. However, I have to move out in the next four weeks. At this point in time, I genuinely don't know where I'm going to be. It's the 30th of May today and I genuinely have no idea where I'm going to be. So instead of spending my time sewing, I'm going to be packing. And one of the big things that needs to be packed is my sewing gear. See you soon. Several months later. I'm in my new place. It's very exciting. I'm by myself and I have space to be creative. I'm like 90? Said unpacked, but I need to sew. Like it's in me, and I just, I just, I need to do it. It's something that is a fundamental part of who I am, and I just need to do it. So I'm going to catch you up on what I have done so far. Now the annoying thing is I've done 
most of the skirt <laughs> to this point off camera. Um, I still cannot find my charger for my camera. So I've got about 50% battery life that I need to work with whilst showing you everything that I can do and trying to document the process. So what I've decided to do is cut back on the documenting the process until I can at least find my charger or order a new one. Ta-da! Where I'm pretty sure I left you last time, I had completed assembling the skirt, but I needed to put it together with a waistband because I was deciding whether to complete the waistband on my natural waist or complete the waistband on the cinched in waist like I had planned. So I decided to whip up a very quick corset. Um, now this one I just used out of all the scraps that I had because I planned to purchase um, like a still bone corset for myself but I have just moved house rather unexpectedly and there was a lot of cost associated with that. So if I could make something that could work at least for the time being then that is a further cost eliminated from this project. So I had all the materials anyway, figured why not, let's just give it a go. And it worked pretty good. This is a corset pattern that I had literally in my stash. So McCall's M7306. I made it up and I had to do major, major modifications. My body is way shorter and it was wider in a lot of areas, but I also had to take the entire two back panels out in order for it to fit. I think if I wanted it to fit 100% flawlessly, I would have needed back panels in there, but I've got a little gap on the outside because this is just the cinching corset to go underneath. So the underlayer is made out of the cotton poplin. Um, I did two layers of that, which I sewed the boning to, and then I did the outer layer as deluxe satin that I had dyed for the skirt that was left over. And it cinched my waist in by 10 centimeters, which is freaking amazing that it did that, to be honest. So once that was complete, then I just had a play as to whether I wanted the skirt underneath or the skirt over the top. Originally I had it underneath so that it was measured to my natural waist as it was, but what I realized is that if I had the corset over the top of the skirt, the corset actually comes like down quite low on the hips, but on Ariel's dress, her bodice doesn't come over the waist. Flipped it around so that the corset is over the top and then added some press studs at the back. Because my only concern doing it this way was there is a segment just kind of at the back side here where the overlap of the skirt happens, where it was too big. But that's all gonna get covered by what I'm about to show you next, which is the overskirt. So I have, where is it? So I have this, I bought this chiffon in this like really light Tiffany turquoise blue. I think I had like four or five meters I purchased of this. But basically I think my plan was to do a full circle skirt. <laughs>
I've known some Until I first met you I was lonesome And when you came inside dear my heart grew light And this whole world seemed new to me You're really swell I have to admit you Deserve expressions that really fit you And so I've racked my brain hoping to explain All the things that you did to me Follow me Mr. Shane Please let me explain But my skirt's still wet I like crazy and I freaking love it like I am so proud of where this project has finished up it took way longer way longer than I ever expected it was gonna take um, moving house in the middle of the project was completely beyond the scope of what I had planned and not only did the practicalities of moving house impact the stream of the project but it also impacted my well-being. So when I first moved, it was really easy to jump into attaching the waistband and sewing things. But as the complexity of hand placing each individual rhinestone that's on the O-skirt came into place, I very, very quickly lost motivation. And so instead of it being something that took two weeks of sitting down, it took me like nearly two months, I think, altogether. But even though it took that long, I am so happy with how it came out. I don't think I've managed to capture on camera how beautiful the rhinestones actually look. Uh, but when that artificial light comes, uh, as well as the natural light, it just glitters and glistens. And it's exactly, exactly what I wanted it to achieve. The problem is that now... I want to add more rhinestones to the overskirt. It might still happen, but I'm gonna call it quits for now because I'd rather do it my original design. I can always add the rhinestones at the end. I don't really have much more to say beyond that. It came out incredible. The way that the skirt moved as you move, it is just, it's so Disney. The corset that I have made is not the best. Like you can see, I don't know, oh it's not too bad. But yeah, like it doesn't go very far up my back, so this little like pudge of flab just kind of hangs over. But it is what it is, it's fine. I'm a, I'm a plus size girl. It's gonna be what it's gonna be. Um, it is also not perfect, like I'm using plastic boning, and so it's cinched in the waist, but it's also like bubbling around the waist as well, so it's not like a smooth, seamless finish, but uh, like I said in the start of the video, I'm going to save myself on that cost, for now at least. Uh, and if I want to get something that is going to give that really smooth, seamless finish, I can always invest the money later on. But this will do for now. I do find that when I sit, it is not comfortable, which means that I am probably injuring my insides by <laughs> sitting down in it. So that's just going to have to be something that I keep uh, tabs on for when I'm wearing it. Uh, long term if I ever go to a con or anything dressed up but that's a later problem the hem is not the same on all sides but again I don't really care because especially when you're twirling and moving who's gonna care not me and I'm the one wearing it so that's all that should matter I am so glad I added the glitter tool it just elevates the skirt that little bit to that next level, a bit more professional, a bit more princessy. And that's the skirt, that's all done. It is now the 17th of October as I'm filming this. So it's been a long time in the making, but it's done. And now I'm super excited to go on to the last step to have this costume complete. The goal is that when I finish the costume, I'll allow myself to buy a proper aerial wig. But again, that's another cost that I don't know if I can afford at this time. So maybe I'll just be a blonde Ariel. For now, I am happy, I am proud, and I'm excited to move on to the next step. So if you want to stick around and view the next step of this making project, please subscribe and let me know what you think so far. I'm really happy uh, and I'm super excited to start the next step. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.